What the francs? So what the hell are franc dividends and why do you, everyday, hardworking Australians need to know about it? Now let me give you the hot tip. While a lot has been talked about when it comes to self-funded retirees, the simple fact is the policy which is being proposed by the Labor government will apply to all taxpayers, excluding only charities and pensioners. So let me walk you through it so you can understand what all the fuss is about. We're gonna sort all the babble from the bullshit, okay? So let's break it down. All companies are made up of shareholders. There may be one shareholders, or there may be many millions of shareholders. Now these shareholders all own a piece of that company. Now when a company makes a profit, the company may choose to retain some of those profits to pay for either past liabilities or future plans that the business has. And it may also, and in a lot of cases, will pay out dividends. So they're gonna pay out part of the profit or part of the income that business has made, they're gonna pay out to the shareholders. And that's why people own shares in companies. You're either owning the share in the company because of the poten potential growth in value of that share over the time, and you're owning that, sh that share so that you can get a piece of the income or the profit that that company is making. So when, a company, when most companies pay a dividend, what they typically do is pay what they refer to as a fully frank dividend. So what's this thing called a fully frank dividend? Essentially, they're gonna pay out a dividend minus tax, and that tax is calculated at the company tax rate. So you're gonna pay out the income of that company that is, is allocated to that particular shareholder. However, they will have already paid tax at 30%, the company tax rate, to the ATO. Now, to prevent double taxation, if a shareholder is on a higher tax bracket, they'll then only need to pay the difference. I.e., if you're someone that's earning you know, $37,000 or $87,000 and you're on the 32.5% tax bracket, the company has already uh, taken 30% tax, so you'll only have to pay the difference being 2.5% in terms of tax. At the same time, if you're on a lower tax bracket, the shareholder is then entitled to a credit or a refund of that tax. Good on you, Flavio. Mate, you don't have to watch the videos. You're welcome to watch other stuff, all right? Now, if Labor win, wins government, here's what, the, what they plan on doing is implementing a policy that means if you've overpaid on tax, the tax that's been paid on these dividends, you'll not be able to get a refund on those tax. In other words, the government will be able to keep the tax that you've paid, the tax that you've overpaid, and you will not be able to get it back. So, who is this going to affect? Now, like I said, there's been a lot of fuss when it comes to self-funded retirees. The reality is, is that all taxpayers, you can get onto Chris Bowen, uh, Chris Bowen the, the Labor Shadow Treasurer, read his, uh, his website about the policy. He says himself that this policy will apply to all tax, uh, tax payers, excluding only charities and excluding only pensioners. Now, while all uh, taxpayers are subject to this, who is it actually going to affect? Well, it's really only going to affect low and zero tax, uh, so low income earners or zero tax payers, because you have to be earning under the $37,000 to be on a tax bracket that's lower than the company tax rate. Now, this policy will also affect, um, so why is there so much fuss when it comes to the self-funded retirees? So past governments have implemented policies to deal with the aging crisis that we're facing. So we've got to kind of keep in context here the pension and how it works. So the pension was originally implemented in 1910. It's always been 65, okay? But back in those days, you typically went to work at the age of 15. You probably finished working by around about the ages of 55, 60 because you were pretty much due to die. Now, if you were able to live until the age of 65, then the government would reward you by paying a pension. Now, the pension, so what the government did, and keep in mind that because of the baby boom is I, the population explosion that we had after 1945, the largest percentage of our citizens are either nearing or entering retirement. In fact, between the years of 2011 and 2021, four million Australians will hit retirement age. That's a third of our workers and a third of our workforce. And of course, you take a third of the, out of, sorry, a third of the workers out of the workforce. If you take a third of the workers out of the workforce, one of the major problems that you're gonna have is um, significantly reduced tax revenues, which means you don't have the money to pay things like welfare. 
Now, to give you some perspective about this, the Productivity Commission released a report back in 2013. It made some major suggestions with regards to how, what the things that Australia are gonna to have to do to be able to continue to afford to pay the pension. One of them was, we're gonna to have to increase the pension age to 70. One of the other possibilities that they floated was that for anyone who was in retirement or anyone that was on a pension, for every year that your house goes up, you would have to give a half of it to the government. That is the kind of funds that the government is gonna require to be able to afford to continue to pay the pension. So past governments provided incentives for people to save and fund for their own retirements. One of these incentives was, for people that had accumulated superannuation, only once you'd stop working. So your superannuation has to have entered what they refer to as pension mode, meaning that you're no longer accumulating superannuation, your superannuation is now being utilized to pay you a pension so the government doesn't have to. For those kind of self-funded retirees, the income that they receive on their investments, they don't have to pay tax on. So essentially what's happening here now is that the policy that's coming in is saying that for and you've got to keep in mind there's 1,130,000 self-funded retirees that this is going to impact. If those self-funded retirees have overpaid tax, i.e. the tax that has been paid to the ATO by the company on their behalf, and they're entitled to a refund, they will no longer be able to get it. Okay, now why should you care about this? Well, firstly, I think there's probably three main reasons why everyday hardworking Australians need to be aware of this and need to really care about it. Firstly, you, primarily most of you are employees. 10% of your income goes into superannuation. Now that, if it wasn't being paid, uh, if the employer didn't have to pay that to superannuation, that's funds that they could use to pay you direct. Meaning you've got to keep in mind that that 10 almost 10%, 9.5% currently, that's your money. That means you work at a minimum of four hours a week. If you're a full-time employee, you're working four hours a week, half a day a week, just for your superannuation. Most superannuation funds want to invest in these kinds of companies because as you near retirement, what's more important is that you're investing in companies that provide you with an income, i.e. a dividend. So while this may not affect you in the short or near future, it is going to affect you in the long term future and you're contributing a significant amount of your week every single week towards your superannuation. The other reason why I think you need to be aware of this and why you need to care about this is that the issue of fairness. So if you're an employee, the company that you work for withholds tax every week or every fortnight from your pay. If at the end of the financial year, it works out that you have paid too much tax and you are then entitled to that refund, okay? So under this new policy, what they're saying is that employees will be entitled to this refund, but if you're a self-funded retiree, you're not gonna be entitled to this refund. Personally, I don't think that's fair for particularly Aussies that have worked their guts out, mainly for around about 50 years, they've scrimped and saved and put together money to fund their own retirement. They are, no, uh, they are not a burden on the rest of us as taxpayers. And then we're gonna hit them with something like this. To me, that doesn't seem fair. Of course, it's up to everyone to make their own decision about that. The other thing that really impacts me, and I think this is something why you should really um, care about this, is I think the way that Labor are approaching this is very deceitful. The narrative that they keep on saying is, they use terms like this, people who are already paying no tax are getting cash handouts from the government. It's complete and utter rubbish. You can never get back what you haven't paid. They have paid tax. It's been paid by the company on their behalf. If they've overpaid, they should be entitled to get that money back. They're not receiving a cash handout. Now yes, for many of these self-funded retirees, once they've received that refund, they will have paid no tax, but that's because that's the tax obligation for those particular self-funded retirees. Now, personally, my own two cents on this particular policy. Look, I think if we wanna put it to the polls and we wanna give it to the majority of Australians, we live in a democracy and we say that self-funded retirees should pay more tax, absolutely not a, not a problem. However, I don't think we should say that if they've overpaid tax, they should not be able to get it back. So if you wanna put a tax rate on the income that they're receiving, absolutely not a problem. But I think that we should be, or well, Labor should be being quite upfront with, um, with the people of Australia and then let the people of Australia make a decision based on merit rather than this on this populist kind of style of politics where they keep trying to pit the everyday hardworking Australians against what they refer to as wealthy Australians. Now you've got to keep in mind, 
Are these wealthy Australians? Well, yeah, look, I mean, a lot of them might have something like a million dollars in super that they're receiving income from. But you've also got to remember that these people have scrimped and saved and put that money away over 50 years. Okay, 50 years worth of scrimping and saving is always gonna result in those people having more wealth than younger people. And of course, I know every single person that I work with and deal with, they are aiming to fund their own retirement. So if that's you, this is something that's gonna affect you as well. So look guys, I wanted to keep it short and sweet, try and keep it as clean and as simple to understand as possible. If you've got any further questions about it, please post them down. Once again, please interact with these posts, please share. Look guys, great talking to you. Look forward to you talking to on my next video, which will be on Thursday.